What's up? Welcome into an emergency episode of the CHGO Bears podcast, moving some things around today. Happy Halloween, everyone. The Bears have made a big trade. Adam Hogmark, Carmen, Greg Braggs Jr. We do have Cole Komet coming in studio today. We're going to actually start a separate show at noon like we always do, but we yep. wanted to jump on early with this emergency podcast, so that's why we're here. This will be quick. It'll be about 20 minutes, and then we're going to shuffle and come back with Cole who just nice. walked in the studio. Yeah, he just walked in, so we'll hear from him here shortly. Guys, Montez Sweat added to this Bears team. They obviously need pass rushing help. They need to generate more pressure up front. This is a big move. This is a guy with eight sacks already this year. The Bears only have 10 on this <laughs> season as a team. It's a big move, but they do give up a second-round pick. Which could very well be, you know, are likely to be in the top six in the second round. It's a very high second round pick. It's similar to last year uh, as far as Chase adding a guy when you're you know, a ways away from the playoffs at this point. But I, to me, this is different because this is a position that you absolutely positively have to have to win. The Bears don't have it. And they had to pay a bit of a premium and to do it at two and six. But I, I, I get the desperation here. And it shouldn't you know, Bears fans, we should all remember what he was able to do against the Bears la last year, yeah. let alone right. what he's been doing this year. Yeah. So, you know, I, I get it's a steep price, but but I I I am I'm certainly not going to sit up here and say I don't like it because I do. I, well, I think they need they needed to do it, it, something this bold, and and I I credit Pulse for doing it. It isn't that much different from last year because they needed a wide receiver as much as they needed a defensive end this year. Yeah, but right now you don't need a wide receiver because you have D, uh, you have you know DJ Moore. But the difference is. They didn't immediately sign Chase Claypool to a contract extension. This move, if you're going to make this move for Montez Sweat, he needs to be signed immediately to a long-term contract extension. You can't do this dance where you're like, okay, now we've traded for him, we've used our second-round equity, and not lock him up long-term. Yeah, so I agree. you got to pay him. Clearly, you're not doing this if you're not going to pay him. You're not trying to. You're not trying to squeeze something out and, and, and win the Super Bowl this year. I just will push back on just one thing. You said not even a pushback. Just to, just to add on, it's easier to find wide receivers. These guys are impossible to find. And uh, he's sitting out there. He's young. He's in his prime. Okay. Yeah. Just to just to make sure you know everyone's up to speed on who Montez Sweat is. I'm sure not our entire audience knows everything. I mean, it's a first round pick back in 2019 by Washington. Okay, number 26 overall. Um, he really kind of came on stronger the last couple of years, I feel like, and they picked up his fifth-year option. So that's where he is right now. His contract is up at the end of this season. So to Braggs' point, like if you're making this move, you're probably hoping to keep that him That makes long the term. most sense. Now, yeah. it, the, the franchise tag is also on the table. Sure. Sure, and with the way which they very well may go down that road. The other thing I'd prefer them not to. I got it. I, I agree with you. I, Hogue, I don't know where you're at on this part, and you, you too, Gregory. But look, he played on a defensive line with a lot of talent. He's coming to a defensive time with defensive line with less talent. So that uh, to, that have to you the, seen Andrew Billings, yeah, my friend? Well, well, <laughs> that to me is the biggest risk here because guys have come here. You don't have to look too far. Take Yannick and Gakwe. They get worse because there's not a lot of help around them. Sure. So now, he's gonna his his degree of difficulty just went up now, tenfold, eightfold, seven, whatever it is, a lot. Now this year Chase Young has returned, but last year they didn't have Chase Young, opposite of Montez Sweat. So Montez was productive last year with less help. They still have a very solid defensive line, but I'm saying he has proven that. You know, if he didn't have that stud on the other end opposite of him, that he still proved he can produce in that in that capacity. 
That's a that's a good point. Um, absolutely, I think we also have Nicholas Moriano available. He's jumping on here with us as, as well uh, from home as he's monitoring all the news today, and we'll continue to be on top of everything on allchgo uh, Nick, you know Montez Sweat well. What not personally, but just you know him <laughs> as like, a really? player. Um, not you know. I don't think you you know, hang out with him or anything. But uh, just your reaction to the trade. Yeah, I mean, you guys, this is a guy that has six and a half sacks on the season. Bears defensive linemen through eight games have six and a, six and a half sacks. So you're seeing kind of the, the productive edge rusher that he is. I'm, you know, when I'm thinking about like this trade, obviously, you, it, you see why it makes sense for the Bears. They just need to find more talent and more guys that can get to the quarterback. But, you know, Washington was an interesting situation to where Sweat and Chase Young were both going to the last year of their contracts. So obviously they gave up the second to get Montez Sweat right now. I wonder, like, you know, had this played out at, towards the end of the season, if you could have gotten one of these guys, you know, maybe offer them a contract when, when the time comes when their contract expired. But you see why the Bears did it, and this is only the latest move of all the, the latest additions the Bears have added to their defensive line. They go get Yannick Ngakwe. They sign Demarcus Walker. They draft uh, – or they also sign Andrew Billings and then draft Javon Dexter, Zach Pickens, and even Travis Bell. So the Bears – like, you can't fault Ryan Poles for he, – he has tried. And he is taking a lot of swings at trying to upgrade this defensive line, just adding talent all over it. But we'll see. Like, I think it was a good point. Like, Montez Sweat was playing on a very talented defensive line. So let's see how he can, if he could still produce at a high level, given the current group that the Bears have right now. Real, real, yeah, quick correction. I said eight sacks. Uh, I'm, I was looking at Pro Football Focus's page. It says he has eight sacks. Uh, so Man, I we can bust toss. I, PFF. Well, I'm just saying that's where I saw that. Um, but yeah, is officially credited with six and a half. So maybe that's their own numbers. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. you know with split sacks or something, they're taking the liberty of saying that. Hey, that should, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, officially it is six and a half sacks. Regardless, that's tied for eighth in the league. Um, tied with a guy named Leonard Floyd, by the way, and Max Crosby. So that well, and that that right there, you just underline the concern. Leonard Floyd. T- totally no, different. Don't make it about Leonard Floyd. No, no, <laughs> yeah, it was just a coincidence. Just no, but but it, but it, but well, it, it's not about Leonard Floyd per se. But it is it is about the fact that team players that, that are what, able to do things away from Chicago Leonard left here, here. He went and played with more talent. He was more successful. Okay. Yeah. So we're asking a guy to come here and playing and play with less talent and and maintain and be a difference maker. It's that that's the calculus that 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 Ryan's got to you know deal with when he's considering the trade and, he, and obviously his decision was to make the trade i this i don't is only th- one piece to, of course you you also are going to come into this offseason and you better continue to bolster this defensive line Corey wooten was talking about this all on monday night that or last night you know it to me it, and i agree with Corey that that is their number one thing now their number one need even after montez sweat yeah you need more and but, and you know listen you're obviously hoping that Javon Dexter is 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 going to continue to mature yeah. same thing with Zach Pickens uh to Andrew Billings is not old 27 right um yeah. so i mean maybe that's that's a piece that you you can look at as you know more I keep him on yeah so look uh am i right about that he's 28 my bad um so Billings i I, I just desperate times, desperate measures. You, this, you, you, how are you going to do it? You, are you going to be able to identify it? Are you, are you, and this also, by the way, is, is you can look at it like, well, they're anticipating drafting offense at the top of the draft next year. Yeah. I, we, no? I, I, no. That, not, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Not, not, so. well, I, I think any tie to the draft would be the fact that we had Dane Brugler on Hogan Johns this morning, actually, and he's, was not terribly impressed with the top end right. edge rushers. And that's where their picks. He doesn't will think be. there's like a Miles Garrett in this draft. So again, let's look at the Bears picks now. You trade away your second round pick, you still have what looks like it's probably going to be two top 10 picks, maybe, you know, potentially two top 5 picks. Um and now you don't have a second round pick though. Now you're you don't have anything till the third round after that. Um so that's the downside of this. And and I also like, I think lessons learned from last year, too. Like, I remember we sat here, Nick. We talked about Chase Claypool. I questioned a little bit about how I didn't like it was the early second-round pick compared to the later one because we were assuming that that's how that would play out as it did. Um, 
and then by the next day you heard all this intel from Pittsburgh, and it was kind of concerning. So I don't want to lean all the way too hard where this is an emergency pod. I'd like to get a little bit more intel on Montez Sweat, but in terms of the player, he's actually rated higher as a, a run stopper right now than even a pass rusher despite those sack numbers. Um, and it's certainly a need for this Bears team, Nick. Yeah, you guys, I think, you know, we, we've learned just from the Chase Claypool, you know, trade. Maybe let's uh, let's give it some time before we make any, you know, rash accusations about what this player can or can't be with this Bears organization. But, you know, obviously the Bears do value that. That's why you keep a guy like Rasheem Green over maybe like a Terrell Lewis or Travis Gibson because they have the ability to stop the run. And, you know, obviously Montez Sweat has the pass rushing numbers to go along with what he can do at stopping the run. But that's just another – it's an asset that – you know, the Bears are looking for in their defensive linemen. And, you know, the Bears have been better overall at stopping the run. But, look, they really need to get somebody that can get after the quarterback. So maybe having a package where you can have, you know, Yannick Ngakwe on one side, Montez Sweat, maybe Demarcus Walker even on the inside. And if you want to put Justin Jones, Andrew Billings in there, like that may give you your best options at getting to the opposing quarterback. But, yeah, I think we've learned, you guys. Let's let's let this play out and see what Montez Sweat can do I before. I refuse to let anything play out. I'm gonna overreact to everything. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, and you're right though with the stop in the run. I mean, they're I think they're they have the third least amount of yards given up, uh, rushing yards in the league. Uh, so that is a step in the right direction. Maybe it's because teams are just like, oh, I'll just pass all over you because you can't stop that. But at the same time, they have you got to give them credit for stopping the run. I guess my question to all of you guys, and I'll start with you, Nick, is. The observation I made last night with the Jalen Johnson news starting to trickle out is would Kevin Warren, if he's looking at this from a bigger picture standpoint, allow Ryan Poles to make moves that affect the future of this franchise next year if he wasn't going to keep Ryan Poles after this year? Would he allow him? I mean... I think you would allow him to do it. And I think there's, I, I would think there's an expectation that Ryan Poles returns. Right? That's what I'm saying. It, essentially, this is a tell that Ryan Poles is not going to be let go like some fans want him to be. I don't think that's Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't jump that. Yeah, I wouldn't say. If anything, it's the coaching staff that should be worried. Not, not so much Ryan Poles right now. But I get it. The Bears fans are frustrated as to what's happening, where the team's at, and you know, lack of overall progress, I think. But I, I wouldn't. I would expect Ryan Poles. To so be you back don't. For you year. don't think that this means that Ryan? I don't Poles think anything's is, been decided yet. But then why? It's just like the White Sox when they let go of their front office, but let their front office trade I, players I, away two weeks before right, which they kind did. of proves the opposite. That well, that's what yeah. stupid organizations <laughs> do. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, that's my base. If Kev, so you're saying Kevin <laughs> Warren is going to make the same mistake because I think that would be organizational organizational malpractice if you allow your GM to make moves for your future if you're not going to continue with the GM making those moves right now. Can I, can I interrupt for a second? I, I think we need a graphic personally, and maybe you're, maybe, maybe you're going down a road that could potentially be correct, but I, this would fall under the, we need a graphic, Braggs is spending too much time on Twitter. There's no. It's not a Twitter <laughs> thing. Yeah, it's it, a it, common it, sense thing. They're not the for, White Sox were dumb as hell for letting hold on, hold, hold Kenny on. Williams and Rick Hahn make moves like and then two weeks Sweat. later just take, take one, fire them. Just take one breath for me. Just take one breath for me. Yeah, but you always want to paste not. everything against Bears Twitter. This is logic that media or fans should be making I'm right giving now. you the logic. They are not firing Ryan Poles in no way, shape, or form. He is just he getting said fired. that's not off the table. That's fine. No, Maybe. what I said was I think we need to live in the moment on Halloween and not pretend like everything's already been decided in January and February. If I'm the president of the Bears, and if I'm Kevin Warren, I'm not. If I, I just think it's, uh, it's just not smart. It's not smart business decision making to let someone make moves I for your future you. if he's not I, in the I, plans I, for your I, future. I agree with you. He's in the plans. Okay, then we don't have to go down this rabbit hole. I, I think it's a I, pretty I, logical. I will, make, I will make of any bet you want, and it could be completely. I that, agree that, do, that Ryan I'll, Poles is staying. Okay, okay. That, but I'm okay. just saying that okay. this is the part of the tell of that. It could be. It could be. Ba balance talk. I'm telling yeah. you right now, he ain't going anywhere. Sorry. I'll yeah. stop with the logical points. Go ahead, guys. Nick. <laughs> Um, here's where Mont, this is courtesy of PFF Bears on Twitter. Uh, Montez Sweat ra current ranks among Bears, Bears edge defenders this season. Sacks, 
first, pressures first, quarterback hits tied first, a 10.6% pass rush win rate first, uh, and their PFF overall grade of a 76.8 first. So he is instantly their best player on the defense. Wow, that's a low bar. <laughs> he, he, better, he, he better be. No, I, they're, I, they're best edge rusher, easily. Well, so was Yannick Ngakwe the minute they signed him, and he hasn't done Well, that's, that point. would be, like, the counterpoint, and the concern here is, like, Yannick Ngakwe got eight sacks but everywhere. now you add Montez Sweat opposite of Yannick yeah. Ngakwe instead of Dominique Robinson, who was inactive here last week, and maybe that trickle-down effect starts to take place. So let's hope that's true. And to the point that he's been playing with a great defensive line, just trivia here because we're all learning more about Montez Sweat by the moment here. I'm sure Bears fans have already started to pour through the stats, but maybe they hadn't, you know, as far as an hour before this. How many sacks do you think is the most he's had in a season? I'm assuming you haven't looked at it, Greg, so take it. To, uh, have looked at what? How many, what do you think the most amount of sacks he's had in one year? Montez Sweat? Yeah. Ten. Yeah, nine. Close. Nine. So nine. He had six against the Bears last year. I know, which is another thing. Like, if you're, are you doing it against the premier teams, or are you getting them uh, against the lesser likes? Nine in 2020 was his top. Twenty last year he had eight. He had seven as a rookie. Five in 21, and he's uh, got six and a half this year. Now, one thing when you look at his uh, his history, he's on the field. Played all 16 games in 19, all 16 games in 20, 10 and 21, all 17 last year. He's played in every game this year. That's obviously important. Nick, you look like you got something on the tip of your tongue over there I don't, that you want to add on. Maybe I'm wrong, but it looks, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, I wonder if just a guy like this, you guys, allows Matt Eberflus to really run his defense the way he ideally would want to do it, just rush four, right? I mean, that he's been saying that forever. Yes, there have been – maybe plays where you've seen maybe a TJ Edwards, a Tremaine Edmonds, or even a Kyler Gordon come off the edge. But what Eberflus likes to do, and I know Bears fans are really don't care for it, but they like to rush four. So with a guy like Montez Sweat, opposite of Yannick Ngakwe, does this allow this Bears defense to run the way that Eberflus would like to do it and maybe get better results? And we did see that prior to the, the Sunday night game against the Chargers. It was trending in that direction, but maybe this allows – he refused to, again, do that, um, you know, run that defense. But it doesn't help if you don't also have a, a guy like Jalen Johnson no longer on your roster when you're trying to run, you know, just four and then play coverage in the back end. Look, uh, when I was seeing the Chase Young rumors over the weekend, I my initial reaction that I put in our Slack was hard pass, and I would prefer sweat. Second round is, again, it's like the only thing. It's like a little – but – I'm going to go back to what I was saying, especially like even Sunday night after this football game. The Bears need players. Like, you need players. This dude is instantly... I mean, he's their best pass rusher easily. He's. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, I don't know if Jalen Johnson's still going to be on the team in a few hours, right. but he's up there as the best player on the defense immediately. Like, yep. these are the types of players you need. This is not, in my opinion, like kind of taking a flyer on Chase Claypool last year where it seemed like even in the moment they were overpaying a little bit. I, I, I'm Last year I feel like I talked myself into the Claypool thing as we went along with the, pod, with the podcast. Like this one feels better to me. Just my instant raw reaction on this emergency pod as a real, one of those real football players I talk about that you're adding to your defense that's making you instantly better. As long as they extend him, right? right. Because if you don't... True. But you also have the franchise tag. And they're going to be in a position where if they have to use that, they can. Um, but that's two years versus what? Like a four-year deal? Well, you're, you're a minimum... Yeah, I'm just saying. A minimum, you're getting them for a year and a half here, I think. Um, and, and again, like, I know we love the idea of these draft picks. But they don't always turn out to be something. Would you rather have Montez Sweat or Jervon Dexter or Zach Pickens or or, or, or Kyler Gordon? Well, it would be Joey Porter Jr. Or Joey Porter Jr. They even sit, right. throw that in there. Yeah, right. Who would you rather have? Right. Well, we need a pass. We, we need a pass. John Michael Schmidt. Mm -hmm. Sure. Look, go. the home run Draft of course. The, the home one. run of course is is keeping your pick, hitting a home run, paying him less, keeping salary flexibility, all of that. 
these there's also a reality. Ryan Poles is in his second year. Five seconds ago on, on this show, I was pushing back on Bragg's talking about uh, his job security. And I'm not saying he's making this deal for job security, but at some point that is going to be for real on the table for him. For Poles? So, for, for no, for oh, for, for Poles. Poles. He's he has he doesn't have forever to build a roster. This guy's sitting out there. You you're weighing a second round pick, or can I add this impact guy to my defense? Is a desperate need for an impact. You again, you're not making moves for your own job security, but does this but take that out of it even does this make our football team significantly better with this guy in here the answer of course is yes is it a steep price yes it is am i willing to make it these are the this is what he gets paid to do i i get this decision chase claypool who was a locker room uh, guy uh, and, and sometimes was playing out sometimes wasn't i'm and and we were, we were all hopeful it was going to work out that was a higher risk this seems a lot less of a risky play that's to why me. I, I i i need that four-year extension you know, because to me, a franchise tag option, fine. They have the but, money. But they have the money, but they tweet have the a show. Lot. Tweet the show. That's his tweet the show. You know, they have a lot of money, but they also have a lot of holes. So I need to, I need to find a, a nice four-year deal, you know, and, and the price is also going to be a, a talking point. You know, he, he shouldn't be paid like the best defensive end in football. But it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. The, the other side of a trade is always, and Nick, I'll let you get back in here in a second, I promise. Um is why the other team is making the trade, right? And mm-hmm. in in some ways, that ends up being the most important. Anytime you acquire a player, it's always like, why was that player available? And sometimes there's very logical reasons, like they just can't pay them. Like the case of Khalil Mack, they made that decision. Then there's other times where there's more involved. I want to uh, share this right away. All credit to the Athletic, uh, Ben Standick covers the uh, commanders for the athletic they are uh, fishbane johns they already have a great analysis of this trade that's up there but i want to share the part specifically on why washington would make this trade this is from ben the trade for washington was inevitable if even if not this player or involving this team at some point they needed to move one of the four defensive linemen they selected in the first round of four consecutive drafts think about that strategy that they did <laughs> four straight years you draft a first round lineman there's just no world in which you can keep all those players even if they're you all just four drew up hits. Corey Wooten's dream scenario yeah, yeah. <laughs> four years but like all two. four of them are hits you can't keep them all you can't pay for defensive linemen second year contract money if they all work out right so that's important to keep in mind here Um, He says, not because they were unproductive or lack potential, beyond the pick investment, agreeing to lucrative second contracts for all four would be an asset allocation issue. Maybe that matters less if the commander's defense dominated opponents. That certainly hasn't been the case in 2023. Washington's allowing 28.5 points per game. Only Indianapolis is lower. Yes, the commanders are allowing more points per game than a Denver squad that surrendered 70 in one game. This trade involving their sack leader wasn't about fixing the broad issues, but the struggles led to pushing the commanders toward trade mode. They just something had to give there. Um, and then there was this other... I want to point this out, too, because he, Ben Stanek says, with six and a half sacks, Sweat is tracking to set a career high. He's a solid run defender, durable, and more stable on all fronts than Chase Young. Right. The, that's no, the inside information from a guy who covers the team that I think matters. That's, that's Specifically good. that comparison for Chase Young. So, so. and uh, Ian Rappaport now tweeting, sources, the commanders may not be done. They are now taking calls on former number two pick Chase Young. Could they trade both of them today? Well, they're in a different – yeah. And, Nick, I'll get your reaction on all this. Keep in mind the ownership trade. Probably big changes on the way in Washington coming here soon, too. So they're in an interesting spot just as a franchise. Certainly nowhere near as stable as the Pittsburgh Steelers last year when the Bears made the similar type move with Chase Claypool. And anytime Mike Tomlin gives a player away, you question it. That's not this situation. Nick, go ahead. Yeah, I think for Washington, like they're, they're just guys in a position where they had the luxury of having so many top-end former first-round draft picks that – you know, like the analysis that you just gave, uh, Adam, it, it makes sense that they needed to move off of one of these guys. And when you have a team that's as desperate and needy for something uh, on the defensive line, then teams are going to call and want to – we don't know if it's going to be an overpriced yet, a second-round draft pick, but, like, it makes sense that if you draft that way as an organization that later on you can get something in return, which the Washington Commanders did. And the Bears are hopefully going to benefit too. This can maybe be a win-win situation for both teams. Like, you get rid of – a guy like Sweat, but also the Bears get a, a premium pass rusher, which they desperately needed. So I think that, 
you know, I know already know Bears fans are already looking. Who won the trade? Who lost the trade? The Bears paid too much. This, I mean, right now on the surface, it could look like a win-win, especially if Sweat continues to do what he was doing uh, in Washington, but for the Bears and starts to get after the quarterback. Nick, great stuff. I know you already got some instant uh, reaction up, allchco.com. Uh, he'll be continuing to track all the moves that potentially happen today or don't happen, uh, so make sure you're following him on Twitter at Nicholas Moriano. we got to run to get Cole Komet up here and ready to go for our noon show, so uh, thanks for jumping. Any questions? Nick, you got anything for Cole? Ooh, um, not at the moment, but uh, have fun with the show, and, you know, obviously you got to ask about um, Jalen Johnson and see yeah. what – same draft class, you guys. So make, they came in together. Make your prediction on that, Nick, before you go. Do you think Jalen's here after 3 o'clock today? I don't. I think he's uh, unfortunately gone. And, you know, I think that – look, we, we spoke to Jalen Johnson at the Super Bowl, you guys, on February 9th, and they started those contract discussions there. 263 days later, and Johnson's already asked – you know, it's asking for a trade. So I, I don't think he's going to be here by the time the deadline comes at 3 o'clock. All right, there's Nick's prediction on that one. All right, thanks, Nick. We're going to get a few of these Supers in. I apologize, it's a weird show. I know a lot of Super Chats came in. we got to get out of here quicker than normal. We'll try to hit as many yeah, as we can. We're going to turn can. around and go live right yeah. away here with uh, Cole Command. Maybe we can – I don't know if there's a way to save them or screenshot them or something. We'll figure something out. Um, the Duke, though, for $49.99. If JJ gets a deal from outside, then the, Bear, uh, the Bears – hang on, I was reading. I got them. you. Homegrown players, see that. You can play well. And he will ship you rather than pay you. If he doesn't get a deal, it will still generate bad, bad blood. blood. Look at all three of us doing this. We GM can do this can't together, keep guys. letting Teamwork. it get to this point with players. I, Duke, I think you're making good points, Duke. I, I, but I also think there's it cuts both ways. You know, like he has to ha if if every player knows that he'll bend to whatever you're demanding. Yeah, that's true. You know, but you so gotta, far he hasn't. Yes, so far he hasn't. I mean, it's interesting what's going on with Jalen. Okay, go ahead. Every player knows. Oh well, this guy's just you know weak at the negotiation table. I'll get whatever I want from this guy. So I I like that Ryan Poles has a bit of a backbone. Seth Crane, twenty dollars, just became a diehard. I'll see you in the Discord, Carm, to talk free agents. Much love from Missouri. All right, Seth, right, I will guys, see you Seth. there, brother. Love it, Seth. Uh, what else we got here? A couple more. Is that Bob Dabrowski? Bob Dabrowski. Bobby, uh, uh, a perfect Bob uh, going $10.69 like he Hiya, would. Hiya, Bob. Let's Bob. go sweaty bears. Now keep Johnson so the next coach doesn't have to start his defense from scratch again. Well, that's the thing, too, by the way. Jalen Johnson's job just got a lot easier. You want more picks from him? Well, there's a great cha greater chance that he's going to get him now because you're actually going to have a pass rush, hopefully. So Eli Sherman, nine ninety nine. Why not? Sweat will help take pressure off of others. Why always he's going to suck here now? Him drawing attention should help the rest of the defensive line. Sweat also much more established, successful player mm -hmm. than Chase Claypool. Chase Claypool. Yeah. I, Agreed. Guys, on these shows, we try to th bring things from multiple angles. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the, a lot, we just try to discuss it from multiple uh, spots. It doesn't mean that, you know, we're just dooming him because he's coming to the Bears. Nine ninety nine, Ryan. People are complaining about a second round pick. We need veteran proven players. A second round rookie is not coming in and saving this D line. We need proven veteran talent. Well, that's, that's why good, they made the deal, Ryan. That's a good point. Aaron Owens here. We'll go with this last one here because we do got a roll. Uh, Nine ninety nine, Hogue. Gotta shout you out, man. Before the Colts joint practice, you had a beat reporter on your pod asked what should we be f uh, fearing about Flus. He literally said the zone defense. He was right. It's good memory right there. 1999 from the Duke. Has Carm washed his hands yet? Yes, and I've showered too, Duke. <laughs> you know, just wanted to get back on set as quick as possible. Took some liberties and just, you know, will forever pay the price for that. All right. Which I'm, which I'm comfortable with. Braggs won't touch me anymore. <laughs> Don't go oh, anywhere. Good. It I'm will be a, a separate phone. link. We'll tweet it out as always. It's right here in the uh, CSGO YouTube channel. Um, but we got Cole Komet jumping on with us. It's noon on Tuesday, so Cole is here. We'll get his reaction to some of this stuff. We also have, you know, it's Halloween. we got some tricks up our sleeves. Here. And Carm's on the trade block. Ooh, trade deadline. I'm going to Washington. <laughs> Let's go. Utica. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hit that See like button. Hit subscribe. Appreciate you guys all being here on short notice for some emergency pod. We'll be back in just a few minutes with Cole Komet. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor.